Guys, I think, uh, yeah, we're just waiting for people to join. Say hi to the Facebooks. Hello, everybody. Say hi to the Instagrams. We're live at Samuel Seafood in our taste kitchen. Wait for some more people to join in our Facebook and our Instagram live. We have some really great uh, promotional items coming on. We're going to do a little bit of a QVC take on here. So if you're looking for pickup seafoods, join in on the uh, conversation. Pickup seafood is going to be available at Samuel's. My cohort is signaling one to four people on right now. That was 14. 14? Oh, <laughs> oh fantastic. I would, the other option was adding one plus four and then five. This is true. So we are going to be announcing what we're doing for pickup seafood during these times. We also have store hours. We're coming in to, I mean, our shelves are looking pretty good. If you're going to other places, the shelves are looking a little, little bleak. Ours are bright, full of both perishable and non-perishable seafood. That's something people forget, right? I mean, we could take a little look at the lobby, too. Yeah. Large bags of rice for sale if you can't, and pasta. And tin seafood. Tin seafood is a great option. We have a new line that we're offering here at Samuels, which is absolutely delicious. It's right up there. And that will last you a long time. And it doesn't need to be refrigerated. And it is good room temperature in case good. your refrigerator goes out. All right, I'm gonna. We'll get started here. Um, from Samuel Seafood, I'm Bill Bradford, and this is our executive chef Ann Call. Hi, everybody. So we are here today because we are offering curbside pickup seafood. So we have awesome seafood options that we are offering for curbside pickup here at Samuel Seafood. Um, you know, it's it's a tough, confusing time for the community, and as a member of the community, we want to make sure that everybody has access to premium seafood, stuff you can afford and stuff that may be high end, you know, for why you're bunkering in right now. So before we get started, we're gonna show you the three different family, we're gonna show you one of the three different family packs we have. And then um, we're gonna go through it. Chef Ann's gonna do some demos about how to store things, how to cook some of the items we have here. Uh, but first, if you wanna get out your notepad or your pen and paper, maybe text it to yourself, you can write down our address. Our address here is in South Philly. It's 3400 South Lawrence Street, Philadelphia, PA. Uh, it's in between Packer and Patterson on Lawrence Street. Our hours are, we've extended them a little bit here. Our hours are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you just come into our lobby right in the main entrance here and we'll be waving hi to see you. And we have so many great options here. Uh, if you wanna make a call and call in your order, that's great because that's kind of how we're doing the curbside pickup. Our number, even our number is easy. It's 800-580-5810. That's 800-580-5810. All right, now I sound like that PBS commercial. There. It was good, yeah. Uh, a little bit. We, we need donations. <laughs> How many calls have we gotten so far? Okay, so let's get started. We have, so like I said, we have three different family packs is what we're calling them. So the first family pack is, they're all under $100 for really good seafood. Great That's, deal for yeah. your family. Um, and it could really help you stay healthy during this time where we all have to keep our health intact. Because seafood with all the omega-3s and all of that, this is what you should be eating. It's okay. strong. And here, we'll give you an elbow, an elbow oh, bump. Yeah. <laughs> they can't see the foot thing, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we have the first family pack. Family pack number one is $49. Family pack number two is $69. And family pack number three is $89. So, we're just, instead of doing all three, we're going to show you family pack two, the $69 pack. So we'll, we'll get started here. I'll go, you know, like item by item. And Chef has all the expertise, so she's going to be the star of this and explaining great ways to use this the seafood. So we have it started. Of course, you get it in, you know, our Samuels box, which you can show off. And it will always, of course, come with the gel pack to keep it cool. Now let's start off with Frozen. This is America's... I guess number two most consumed seafood, we have shrimp. So these are frozen shrimp. They are 26, 30 count. So that means 26 to 30 come per pound. It took me like a few months to be here to realize that's what it meant. 26 to 30 really? per pound. Yeah. I know. Blonde. Oh, you're blonde. You're, well, you I'm a it. little more gray now, <laughs> yeah. but. That's where the wisdom comes from. Oh, in. I don't know about that. <laughs> So uh, these are peeled and deveined white shrimp. This is a, a, a very, you know, mild shrimp that, that has a very easy to enjoy flavor. Anyone would like this shrimp. Uh, is there anything you want to say about this product? Yeah, well, this is a, a 
great for your family. There are lots of things, really versatile with product. Um, you could make shrimp cocktail. You could do a scampi. This could go into a pasta, of an Asian stir fry with a little broccoli. Even in a fried rice or a pan fried noodle, um, that would be a great addition to any meal. Um, they're low in fat, um, so they're really good uh, for you. Um, and again, you don't have to, because they're individually quick frozen, you don't have to use all of them at the same time. You can take out what you need. So if you're a family of two or a family of five, you know, you portion how many pieces you want to eat per dish um, and cook it that way. And then you'll have more to, you know, throughout the week. And that's good because it's a two pound unit. So that's one thing I forgot to mention. It is a two pound bag of shrimp. So if you have a decent amount of people to feed or maybe you're sitting alone in your apartment, Watching Back to the Future alone. You uh, too? You could even do that. So. Can I ask you a question, Chef? Yes. Um, sorry to chime in. I know I'm behind the camera, but uh, I just got to get in the spotlight. I couldn't get all the bread I wanted. I got a bunch of tortillas at home. Would those okay. shrimp be uh, suitable for awesome. tacos? Awesome. Awesome in tacos. And Groovy. And have a fryer, Tuesday's coming. Fry um, you can uh, fry them too. Well, it might be Cinco de Mayo soon, so I mean. Hey, you're right. Yeah, like this is the kind else. of thing I'm thinking about. We, have, we also have a question. How long will the shrimp keep after thawing? After thawing, you're looking at uh, a, a few days. A few days. Um, I'm going to say as long as you put them in an airtight container, um, they're covered and you're not touching them with your bare hands, which you shouldn't be any anyway now using gloves and using mm -hmm. your hand sanitizer um they should last i would say three days after being thawed awesome. great thanks right, so guys move on to that was america's number two consumed seafood next up we have the number one fresh atlantic salmon look at that color. show me that show me that <laughs> so these are Ooh. these are fillets so they are skin on fillets there's not too much to do to this as far as you know cleaning you don't have to scale it uh, you don't have to butcher a whole fish. Are there bones nice. in there? No, the pin, it's pin, pin bone out. PBR what do you mean? What do you mean, chef? Pin bone out. So there's no bones. This is where your bones would be. There are no bones going down there. You do have a little piece of, of belly flap here, mm -hmm. which you could utilize to do other things, such as like a tartare if you want to get fancy, or if you want to put it in a noodle dish or a fried rice or cook it up and make salmon cakes. That's another great idea that, that you can use. Um, and... People shouldn't be scared of this. This is something that's really easy to take care of at home. You could keep the skin on or you could take it off or you could take it off after cooking. I like the skin. Even my dogs like to eat the skin. So if you have a dog or a cat and you don't want to utilize the skin, that's something you can always roast in your oven um, for about a half an hour at 400. Nice little crispy skin treat for your animal. So normally when I'm portioning a salmon, I'm gonna show you how to portion it. Um, because this is also a great fish. If you're not gonna use it all at once, great to freeze. People say, oh, I don't wanna freeze the salmon. It's gonna change its flavor. It's gonna change that. It does not at all, as long as you're taking care of it properly. So that's what we're gonna talk about now. Mm -hmm. So if I were to make something else out of this, I'm just gonna just go down here and we're gonna just cut um, the fish. take that belly piece off and we'll use that for something else later and then normally I recommend doing like a, a five to six ounce portion it doesn't have to be perfect you're at home you're not at a restaurant so you're not gonna say oh or maybe somebody at your dinner table will say your piece is bigger than mine <laughs> so we're just gonna cut this down that's about the size that I like to do I think that's a good size for um, I don't know. Is this enough for you to eat? You probably for me, need. I need tons. I, I could have one or two of those. But that's but like not that's a maybe less. four to six ounce portion right there. So you're just cutting through it. It's super easy. It's not hard at all. Um, and then what I recommend doing is first wrapping the salmon in plastic wrap, and then wrapping it in freezer paper um, or some sort of wax paper because it's just going to freeze better. Wrap them individually and store them in a Ziploc bag. And after you do that, then you can just take out the portions you need out of the freezer and you don't have to worry about the shelf life of it. Does aluminum foil uh, work in place of the wax paper, Chef, or will that be problematic? You can do alum aluminum foil. I don't like to freeze anything in aluminum foil. It's just it's just what my preference. Okay. Is it uh, environmentally conscious or a flavor thing? Sorry to ask. I, I've been getting a lot of questions about it. <laughs> um, well, I, so 
supposedly sometimes aluminum foil is not good to have like protein stored in uh, just because it can have a reaction okay. um, to whatever protein you're, you're storing in that. Groovy. And we have another question. What, how do you guys feel about farm-raised fish? Farm-raised fish is awesome. And that is the, the way of the future and the way almost everyone is eating fish. You don't even know it. Um, and this is, this is Atlantic salmon. So there are no, there's no real wild salmon, wild Atlantic salmon that you're getting on, at any restaurants or in the supermarket. Atlantic salmon stocks in the wild have been uh, depleted several years ago. So to make it, salmon as available as it is on your menu, it's completely because of the, the increasingly improved aquaculture systems that are in place in, in Chile, Norway, Iceland, uh, Canada, of course. Uh, so. 65% of what we provide here at Samuels is aquaculture. And uh, the, some of the improvements made over the past couple decades has, has changed the game for good. So, you know, there's a good way to raise fish and there's a bad way to raise fish. And we always supply from vendors that raise them the proper way. And when you taste it, it's great. I mean, if you wanted like a wild salmon, you'd have to wait until, you know, late spring throughout the early fall when the wild Alaska is salmon season, which is a completely different species. So. If you want Atlantic salmon, something this gorgeous and this versatile, you know, aquaculture is a good thing. And this is a great, fast, easy protein to cook that's good for you. And if you're, let's say you're just a household of one, um, portion up the salmon, throw it in your freezer. I even recommend, and so do other people, cook it in the toaster oven. You don't even need to turn the oven on. Put your little toaster oven on, 15 minutes, your salmon is done. You don't even need to get a pan out, just, uh, you know, put it on a little sheet tray, cook it up. I like to use like a little Asian marinade, or if you don't even like to do that, you could mix a little panko breadcrumb, which we also have here at Samuel's. Mm -hmm. uh, mix it with a little bit of parsley and lemon, top it off on your salmon, you're good to go. Great. All right, well, let's do some cooking. Okay. All right. Scallops. We sell a lot of scallops. I love scallops. We have 10, 20 count scallops, which sort of like a shrimp, you know, that means 10 to 20 scalps come per pound. So that's a large scalp. You know, it's not a jumbo scalp, but it's large. Uh, these are, you know, dry, fresh scalps caught off, you know, whether New Jersey or Massachusetts. So these are, I mean, they're easy to cook, but they're just so delicious and they're always impressive. So you'll get two pounds with this, with this number two box, the number two family pack, you'll get two pounds of 10 to 20 scalps. This is another thing that you can freeze as well. Um, this you would freeze a little bit differently. Um, you would probably lay them out on a sheet tray, put them in your freezer or on a piece of parchment, and once they're ready, then you could individually pack them in, I would do a double Ziploc bag. So, so you freeze them without any treatment on the sheet, and then once they're frozen, you refreeze them after packing? You would just, yeah, put them, yeah. they would be individually, like your own individually quick frozen scallop. Very cool. you could do as well. Um, Scallops, some people are scared of cooking, and you really shouldn't be. They're fast, they're easy, they're delicious. They go with any flavor profile. Again, you could use them just as a seared scallop, as your center of the plate, or you could... Ceviche. Mm -hmm. You could use ceviche, do ceviche, which would be awesome as well. Um, scallop carpaccio, they're great raw too. You could put them in a pasta. You could even steam scallops are, are not bad. Um, but the biggest thing is cooking them and getting the proper sear on them. Um, I have a pan here that I'm getting hot. And for people, if you're not, a non-stick pan is probably the better pan for a novice scallop cooker, or you could use stainless steel or cast iron. Both are good, but sometimes the scallops can sometimes stick. Cool. This is a restaurant secret. Why do restaurant scallops sear up better than other people's scallops? I put them on a little towel. That little bit of moisture that they have in there, that the towel is gonna take that away. I just like to turn them over. And most restaurants, when you're cooking fish, you do the same thing when you're cooking fish to get that moisture off so you get a nice sear. You're gonna to wanna to get your pan nice and hot. I'm gonna put a little bit of our Santinez olive oil in the pan. That's what we use mostly to cook these. And I'm just gonna cook these, just a nice, easy sear. Season them with a little bit of salt and pepper. 
Chef, you know what I really dig with these? What's that? Wrapping them in that curved Buddha bacon we have out front. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's good too. And we've scallops got plenty. And, scallops and pork and scallops mm -hmm. and pork belly. Ooh, that's one of my favorites. It's one of our seven fish at Christmas at our house. Paul Sikorsky, Sammy Brown, best wishes to you, sir. Big show. Sammy was just in here, pal. Thanks a lot. We hope to see you soon, bud. Grazie mille. Uh, Quinn Sully joining the chat. Quinn Sully? <laughs> Quinn, thanks for all those rides home, bud. Quinn's a gentleman. He's nice and he donates his car when it's raining out for me. Oh, that's Yeah, yeah, he gives nice. me a little ride home in South Philly once in a while. Good guy. So as you can see, you're, you want to get your pan really hot. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. And you don't need to use as big of a pan for your scallops that you're using. So the trick of the, the scallops, seeing how they're cooking, is you, and this is with fish too, you can almost see, especially with this scallop right here, you're gonna see that it's starting to get brown around the outside, the flesh is caramelizing. Mm -hmm. Now, I like my scallops medium rare. That's not for everybody, but that's how I like them. Um, so you cook them to the doneness that you like. Some people people like them cooked all the way through or just a little bit of translucent in the center, but they don't take long. These are almost ready to get flipped. And again, if you want a, a scallop that's a little bit more done, you can always you know, throw them in your oven um, or just keep cooking them right on the stove top. I also, this is working in too many French restaurants, I always like to put a little bit of thyme in with my scallops. Mm. Time after time. Uh, yeah. Time and time we're again. We're all have a lot of time. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do with these scallops, too, is I don't ever start scallops with butter. I finish with a little bit of butter. Um, Why is that? Because the butter solids, unless you're using a clarified butter, the butter solids will separate from the butter and they're gonna cause the scallop almost to steam a little bit or to get too brown. Mm. They're not gonna have the same nice dry sear. Okay. See, as you can see these, this nice. is you know that they're a good dry scallop. These are the same ones you'll get at home if they're the same as family. And this is a great deal. I mean, everyone says they're out of chicken. They're out of eggs, they're out of all of that at the store. Here at Samuel's, we have everything that you're going to need to get through this time. Hi, Joe. Hey, Paul. So now I'm just going to add two little knobs of butter. And I like a little lemon with my, my scallops. Mm. This is how I cook a lot of my fish. It's really simple, it's easy, a nice side of, you know... Joe Las Vergata, who works here, always mm -hmm. uses these with some zoodles if you're looking for a low carb. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to finish with a little bit of lemon. And voila. Give it a little baste here. We did get a question. Do you sell toilet paper? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> How much are you paying? <laughs> we do have 50-pound bags of rice, though. And what you do with that bag when we're done is your business. <laughs> so we're done here. There we go. So you have a nice, nice sear and a nice looking scallop. Again. Hi, Chris. Thanks for stopping in. Let's take a look at that plate, Chef. I have a little dirty. Cream Joe and I are going to try not to eat anything until we're done with this. Yeah, speak for yourself. Look at that. Okay, Joe's just going to eat it. And if you don't want to make sauces at home, we also have some sauces that would go, you know, we have cocktail sauce, tartar sauce, we have a dill mustard uh, horseradish sauce, which would be awesome with salmon, oh, yeah. awesome with the scallops. And we have a variety of Asian uh, sauces that we have bottled, which are also would be great with any of these things. And you don't have to worry about going out and buying any extra ingredients. We will give you a little tour of the shop once we're all wrapped up today, see what's in stock. And then we said you get two pounds of these. So two pounds and this meal, this particular meal was $69 for the whole box. I mean, that's that could almost, at certain times of the year, that would be the cost of two pounds of scallops. And you said, what was the uh, number, Bill? It was ha this uh, is uh, family meal number two. Oh, sorry, oh, the, the scallop number. These are 1020s. So, so this 10, is only a half a, 
yeah, half to a quarter that, here. Exactly. That's, that's a great only portion. A little bit. So that's a, and I think four scallops is a nice size yeah. uh, portion. That's what you would get normally in a restaurant. Um, and you're not going to get this quality of seafood in your normal grocery store. And if they even have scallops now, mm. we have them. And as Chef mentioned earlier, scallops freeze really well. Scallops are, are one of the items that just freeze very well. So if you don't want to eat all of them now, it's one of the items that you can freeze and use for later. And that would be something if you do like bacon wrapped scallops, mm -hmm. you could wrap them in your bacon, freeze them, and then take them out when you want to cook them. And, and we that's do have, another option. We have Kuravuta bacon here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have some pork products that are absolutely delicious. All right, we can move on to in case you want to make any crab cakes. Oh yeah. We have our blue brand lump crab meat. This is uh, Indonesian crab meat. Now this is pasteurized. This is what I was mentioning earlier. You know, seafood is perishable when you want to keep it fresh, but this is pasteurized crab meat. So it is cooked, but it's pasteurized. So this shelf life is months. It lasts months and months if you keep it cool, of course. We can always have it this weekend, whatever you want to do, but this is our lump Blue brand crab meat, Indonesian, tons of flavor. Uh, Chef, you want to talk about what you like to work with? Yeah, I mean, I really love using lump crab crab meat to make crab cakes. Um, it is a great product in that. It's great in pastas. Um, it's great in a fried rice or um, a noodle. Um, it's great to make ravioli out of if you like that. Crab salad, crab and mango salad, nice and refreshing this time of year. Um, kind of makes you look forward to that summertime, a great thing to do. Um, and again, this is like Bill said, this is going to last a long time in your refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So you might even want to pick up more than one can. Because you're looking at like six to eight months, definitely. At least. At least. Yeah. No problem. Still delicious. Fresh tasting. And this crab meat has a really nice clean flavor, um, which lends well to many different things. Oh, Annalisa's here. Hi, Anna. And then we'll get back to some cooking. And by the way, the crab, this are, these are one pound units. So you get a, in this can, in completely sealed, you get one pound of the lump crab. Mm -hmm. We'll move along. We're gonna do some more cooking, I believe. Mm -hmm. Bronzino is probably on 75% of all restaurant menus. I'm sure that's a, a pretty close number. So we have Bronzino. We're doing two pounds of filet. And this is a decent amount of fish. That is a decent amount of fish. Bronzino is a Mediterranean sea bass. A lot of Bronzino is, I mean, it's very popular, obviously, in the Mediterranean region. Well, we can, we have ours from Greece and Spain, and uh, it's just, it's a, this is another aquaculture fish that, because it's aquaculture raised, you know, it, the availability is good, and even the price is pretty good, especially in this, uh, you know, in this family pack too. So you'll get two pounds of Bronzino fillet, skin on. Uh, I think maybe everyone in this room has done the work pin building mm -hmm. Bronzino. It's not especially. It's not like no going to a rock to concert. Pin, no one likes to pin bone Nobody fish. likes to. Oh, are you kidding? I do it. That's when I go home. That's what I do. Yeah, it's that's relaxing. Yeah, yeah, pin bone? Yes, it's relaxing. I find it relaxing. Well, Tina's gotten the bill. He's just yeah. pin yeah. boning. Alone. Scaling, pin boning. And just so you know, this is about, this is two pounds of fish is about eight fillets. And for me, I think um, one fillet per person is enough. If it's for, mm -hmm. if you're hungry, like Bill is hungry. Generally. Um, or like Joe, you can't see Joe, but he's well, probably can. hungry too. So <laughs> hungry Joe. Probably for somebody that's Starving. a big eater, um, two would probably be good. Now there's once it's like this, there's really not much that you need to do unless you want a smaller piece of fish. Um, but that is going to be, you know, you're looking at like two or three ounces if you're doing it like that. Mm. There's really nothing to clean up. Again, this is a fish that you could freeze if you wanted to. You would do the same as you would salmon. Um, I would recommend doing two portions, uh, plastic wrapping them individually, and then putting them either in a Ziploc bag with freezer wrap, whatever you want to do, then pull out the pieces as you need them. Do you need to worry about like orientation of a uh, skin side, flesh side for any of that storage? Like but you want skin to skin? I, I wouldn't know. I would actually wrap plastic Okay. Individually, the pieces, and then wrap them together and freeze them okay. and then put them in a plastic bag. And they work, you know, completely fine like that. I mean, so many fish freeze well 
Um, if you're worried about the, the shelf life of it, um, there really isn't anything to be concerned if you put it in the freezer. Can you tell us a little about the flavor of Bronzino? Maybe compare Bronzino, it to something else we know? I'm going to say Bronzino is a really, it's a mild flavored fish. Um, the skin gets really nice and crispy. I love the skin on fish. It's not for anybody. Again, if you don't like the skin, you can always take it off after it's cooked. I, I would cook it skin on. I just think it, it stays together better. Um, and if you don't want to, if you don't want to pan sear this, you could grill it. Um, you could also steam it. You mm. could actually put two fillets together and make it like a crab meat stuffing or oh, yeah. roll it. Yeah. I mean, you have crab yeah. or you <laughs> Take out that can. With shrimp. That would be another, or even a spinach mm. uh, stuffing would be nice. I think mm. one of the reasons Bronzino is so popular is because it's very easy to like. You know, if you're not a huge, if you're having somebody over, remember your family doesn't mm. like a, a, a fishy flavor. Bronzino is so easy to like. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's got a mild, clean taste. Yes. It, it's very healthy. And great texture, but it's just, it's a very easy to like fish. It's training so, meals fish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very it's con too. I mean, consistent, too, because it's aquaculture. I mean, yeah. you're going to get a similar flavor and a really nice one at yeah. that. Right. And this is a yeah. good fish to steam, um, like Asian style, with a little bit of uh, scallion, ginger, a little bit of chili oil. Um, and a little finish with a little bit of soy or sesame. I, I really like it that way. Uh, Shifan, you just got some applause from Amanda Murphy. So thank you, Amanda. We appreciate it. <laughs> let's Yeah, let's give Amanda a clap. Joe, you snuck a scallop when I wasn't looking. Can well, I eat one? I think we have to sneak him. Hi, Susan. Oh, wait, let me get a fork. Hi. Get a fork. Yeah, yeah, we're in the midst of a crisis. <laughs> yeah, Bill, you can, you can do that. And we didn't talk about that. We let's talk about it. Tartar. You could do sashimi. You give me a fork. You could also do, um, you know, a sushi roll. Spicy. Yeah, once you All sashimi right. roll. This is amazing, by the way. The scallop, absolutely delicious. Let's see. Va bene. Mm, it's really good. So again, we're doing the same thing that we did with the scallops. So and this is what's important. Cooking fish is easy. You just have to know what to look for. Mm. Now, this... Do you think you can tell this fish is really fresh because it kind of curled up a little bit? So I just like to, because I like to get my skin crispy. I'm going to put, you know, just press it down with my spatula. What level heat? This is like medium, like medium, a little, a little higher than medium. Would it be cool to use like uh, weights if you have them in the kitchen for something like that? Or too Some much? people do, but I think that's too much for a fish that's this thin. Um, and okay. again, this is a... I'm going to do the same thing I did with the scallops because that's, I just like to cook my fish this way. And it also looks pretty. Well, taste it good with the scallops. I'm sure it's going to be good with the bronzino, too. It make you look, look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> so, again, what you're looking for is, as you can see, the fish is starting to get, um, you know, turn a little bit of opaque on the outside. So, you're looking for that. And the easiest thing about bronzino, it doesn't take long to cook. And then once it's almost that white color all the way around, I just flip it, turn off the heat, and the fish is done. Finish it with a little butter or a little bit of lemon. Um, you can make a quick pan sauce with a little bit of white wine and some butter and some capers, maybe a little bit of uh, fresh herbs, and there you go, you have a meal. All right. We got another quick question. Uh, we answered it in the feed, but remember, guys, we are open from Monday to through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Giuseppe's Market. We're down here at 3400 South Lawrence Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we are we're here. We'll see you. My favorite part. Is oh yeah. It's like butter. Do you remember that Saturday night stick? In Linda Richmond. I, I do remember that. A big stick of butter. No, it's got enough butter, but it could use a little more cowbell, Bill. <laughs> we could use the pan as a cowbell. Yeah. So then Thank you're you, Bill, for the 90s SNL reference. Okay. <laughs> and you can see you have a nice um, brown color. Oh, yeah. Um, and if you want to just dot off some of the... And keep your skin nice and crispy. And as you see, like it's, you just have a little bit on the inside that's... Just not cooked. Got hit a little. But that's oh, all right. Sorry about that. Don't worry. It's going to be worth the taste. And then I... you have a nice crispy brown skin. Beautiful. And then I'm going to turn it off, and we'll complete here.
and give it a little lemon. Simple, easy, and healthy. Yeah. If you want to get fancy, you can always oh, get caught say. Mediterranean sea bass. You're making cute little menus for your guests. Mediterranean sea bass, bronzini. And again, this is a fish that you can grill, stuff, steam. And it's a fish that will please any non-fish eater. We got a plate for you. I don't want to hand it to you ungloved right now. Yeah. Thank you. And these fillets, it's two pounds of fillets, as I mentioned, skin on, pen bone out, they're ready to cook or freeze. It just nothing has to be done to them, they're ready to go. If you want to take the skin off, I suppose you can, but skin on bronzino speaks for itself. It's and you still have about six nice. fillets left, right? Yep, yeah, you still have, have six, six fillets. Yeah, That's beautiful, dinner. look at that. Look at how well that crisps up. When this is all over, guys, we're gonna give you all the fuel you need to have the celebration dinner party. Don't do it yet. Be responsible. So we can run through what this, this is, as I mentioned, this was family pack two. This comes with the shrimp we showed you. It's two pound bag of shrimp, which can be cooked now or saved for later. Also, we have the, the salmon we brought with, that was a full side. So this is about a two to three pound side of salmon. Uh, I, that last, that's a lot of salmon. That's a good yeah. amount of salmon for you. And then we also have the one pound can of the pasteurized Indonesian Lump crab meat. This is our blue brand here. It's amazing. The two pounds of scallops. As I mentioned earlier, the chef cooked, I think, four of them, which was like a drop in the bucket with a bag. We have two pounds of 1020 size scallops. These are dry, local scallops. They're delicious. These are sea scallops. Hey, Bill, I saw one that was a little orange in there, and I hear a lot of things about that. Can you tell us what's going on? I know those are great to eat. If they're, if they're having like a little bit of a different color, mm -hmm. that's usually because of what they're, they were eating at that time. It might give it a little bit of a different mm -hmm. coloring, which happens with, uh, you know, especially like wild salmon, they get that color because of what they're eating. So generally speaking, they have like that, you know, that white, bright color. You see when it's a little, it has that color to it, just it was eating something differently. Mm -hmm. You know, we are what we eat. Pink and orange is totally cool, guys. Yep. Same wonderful flavor. And then the two pounds of the bronzino. So we have two pounds of bronzino, skin on filet, two pounds of the dry 1020 scallops, two pounds of 2630 uh, peeled and deveined shrimp. So they're already clean, pretty much ready to go. And one pound of the lump crab meat and a pound of the side salmon. So, excuse me, a side of the salmon. And that's all for $69 a box. Now, we have, like, we had orders coming in, but you know, we have the best fishmongers, I mean this, we have the best fishmongers in the world yes, sitting above us. And that's what these guys are ordering right now. They are ordering these boxes. And uh, it's all prepared by us here. And, you know, whatever's packed here is packed by completely, like, talk, talk about trained fishmongers that we have exactly. in the back. These are all guys that are working very hard throughout these times and still getting seafood out there. So uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a difficult time, but we're all in this together. And there's, that's what we're here to do is make sure you are able to get the best seafood. It's affordable. It's mm -hmm. it's delicious. And it's healthy. healthy. Yeah. And our, our, our health standards, Bill, I mean, I don't know if you want to mention HACCP at all. Uh, yeah, we hold ourselves to a... We go, and we're, I mean, every day of the year, we're always undergoing... I mean, we're always undergoing audits throughout the year, but we always practice in the gloves. I'm not... As cool as these are, I wear these for a safety precaution. Uh, so everybody's still here working, and we're here to get best seafood to you so if you want to like look at something physical you can check out yesterday's Facebook and Instagram post it has a post with uh, the three different packages and the pricing and like I said if you want to write it down we have our address is 3400 South Lawrence Street Philadelphia PA it's near the stadiums not much going on at the stadiums right now so you'll find plenty of free parking and not much traffic at all and if you want to call us to place an order just call 800-580-5810. And our hours of operation here are Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I also want to mention, if you get the South Philly Review, if you if you live close to me in South Philly, we had an ad in the paper. Or if you're anywhere, this is the Philadelphia Inquirer. Big ad. This is for Giuseppe's Market. Giuseppe's Market is our retail market as you walk into Samuel Seafood. 
So come to 3400 South Lawrence Street, walk in the main entrance, someone will be here to greet you and you'll be in Giuseppe's Market. Unbelievable, we have some prepared food, we have Uncle Tony's uh, deviled clams, we have Uncle Tony's crab cakes, fish cakes are awesome. We also have roasted red pepper sandwich. It's Rosie's roasted red pepper sandwich with anchovies and red peppers. This is a new sandwich, it's $5, amazing. Live mussels, and then check out the soups. You can freeze soups, right? Yes, Absolutely. Yeah, we have uh, the Spanish crawfish gumbo, which is definitely my favorite. And mm -hmm. we also have a California oyster chowder. They're $35 for a whole gallon, and mm -hmm. they're made here by very acclaimed chefs, so it's delicious. And it's very cost efficient. You can show off. You can tell them you made it. I guess we don't. Yeah, we don't. We don't, don't care. We, we don't care about that. And then, if you check out, we have some of these tin mm -hmm. seafood. Not all seafood Let's is highly perishable. We have Bon de Pesco. Sardines are on special. For this the is the newspaper best one. What's that? The curry. Tuna with a hint of curry. Oh, it's delicious. It's like not too much. I love the classics, a little olive oil. I add a little salt and pepper, maybe hard boil an egg yeah, on a piece of toast. Go. Hey, Bill, um, we got a good question here from Paul Sikorsky again. Uh, Paul, you're the man. Thank you. Ooh, that's upside down. That's driving me crazy. Um, Bill, how early should we order ahead, or what can we expect if we're placing orders for these family boxes? You can order the day of. You know, we just ask for maybe uh, one to two hours lead time so we can, it's fresh fish, it's coming from here, but we need to put together the boxes. So give us like an hour or two. You can come pick it up. You don't even have to get out of your car. You can if you want. We're going to say hi to you. Uh, everyone in here is practicing complete safety measures. We even have sanitizer <laughs> available, but we will come out to your car if you'd like. So what you would do is just call our number, order the package that you'd like, and we put the order in and you tell us what time you're gonna come pick it up and call us when you get here if you don't wanna get out of your car. Just call the number, 800-580-5810. Call the number and we'll come out to your car and with the beautiful box. And it's just a couple hours, maybe an hour or two for lead time. And look, Bill, enjoyed the food so much he got a stain on himself. I did, I did, I <laughs> actually have- It's a delicious stain, Bill. This is <laughs> omega-3 oils from the fish. It <laughs> makes your shirt smarter. It does. <laughs> So as I, like Chef and I were saying, we have this curbside pickup. It's available now. Uh, check out yesterday's post with the different packages we have available. We have one, two, and three. Different items in each one, different pricing, all under $100. Give us a call, place the order. And you also come here and check us out. We have amazing, amazing specials. All these are great items. And we're just happy to see everybody down here. As I mentioned, difficult time. We want to make sure everybody, everybody has the seafood that they need. So come down, mm -hmm. we're all in this together. And Chef, do you, you want to say anything else? I was... Come and get your seafood. Yeah. Enjoy it over this time where you might be quarantined in your house with your you know, friends and family. Um, it'll make great cooking fun with your kids. Um, they can learn about eating good fish and having a healthy meal. And I think that's mm -hmm. uh, something that everyone should do. I never thought of that. All these foods are really kid friendly. I mean, I think uh, one of my nieces, she's two years old. She loves salmon. She loves scallops. And, uh, yeah, like all these things have that kind of flavor that I think kids mm -hmm. won't be scared Absolutely. of, you know? The canned seafood even looks fun. Different yeah, colors. right. It's very easy to like. So, yeah, everybody come down here. If you have any questions, you can leave comments. Stay interactive with us on social mm -hmm. media. The uh, deep voice guy behind the camera is our social media guy. And so we're happy to help you in any way possible. So. Yep, and I team up with Mr. Joe here. He's a NASA space shuttle uh, enthusiast. Why are yeah, man, it's all about Tesla. I'm a scientist. I'm learning how to get to Mars. Yeah. We're going to take a little tour of the lobby. Uh, we will have all the specials. We have them in our posts. We're going to be keeping you up to date on social media. Yes. So please follow us. It's probably the fastest way we can update you. We'll still do all those traditional forms of communication. But uh, you can expect to hear from us in a timely fashion on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Guys, thank you very much. This was a lot of fun today. I hope we can do this more uh, as things uh, continue and settle down. Yeah. Joe, let's go tour the lobby. Let's see what we got to offer. Hi, Tony. Hi, Chef. We're going to check out your sandwiches, man. <laughs> all right, here we go. So we've got all kinds of products here, tons of different shrimp. It might even be intimidating. Thank goodness we're going to meet Brian and Will, who are here always to give you recommendations on how to store, what to buy, what you're going to like, what you might not like, which is probably nothing. Like me. Yeah, like... <laughs> All right, we've got tons of uh, bread crumbs here, panko, clam juice for your fish fumets, 
If you're like me, you love some good scungeal salad. If you're out of Sri Racha, I'm sure people are stocking up on that too. We've got it, $6 each. There's our Bon Petisco products. Of course, Santa Ines olive oil. We've got by the case as well as large. These are uh, five liters, which is never enough for me. Tons of great dry goods here. You hear Joe giving his review for Instagram here. Oishi shrimp, one of our best aquaculture products. These uh, shrimp are frozen and shipped to us within hours. They're tremendous. They got a great flavor, a great snap. They're harvested while they're still alive. A lot of shrimp products are frozen, but this is probably our top of the line. Um, we love it. I'm going to be bringing some home for myself tonight. We've got shrimp burgers. You can chop up those shrimp you buy and make your own. Um, crawfish tail meat from Spain we've got available. The same stuff in our gumbo. West Coast oysters we can get for you, which is also in our oyster stew. Here's some of the bacon we mentioned. This is all Kurabuda pork. Uh, it's heritage brand. Berkshire pork from here in the United States. Small groups of farmers. Uncured thick cut bacon. Great for those scallops. We've also got Jadori eggs, I believe, in most cases. So it'll go well with that too. Ah, here they are. Some of the sauces Chef Ann mentioned to you. Some of our Aunt Connie's prepared products. Our chefs are hard at work making that for you every day here in the kitchen. Anchovies, bocaron, sardines. Ask us what the difference is. We love giving you advice. As you can see, we're already starting to sell out of our claw crab cakes. We talked about lump meat. Claw has great flavor. Uh, if you're looking to add some flavor to something like mac and cheese, or, you know, a crab cake with a little more filler if you want to use those breadcrumbs you got lying around. Claw is a great choice. Uh, we've got everything, though. And uh, if you tell us what you want to do, we'll be happy to make the right recommendation. Oh, and of course, one of my favorites. Fried shrimp and uh, I like to call them golf cutlets. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us today here at Sam's. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Take care.